in our previous lecture, I illustrated concepts about hypothesis testing and falsifiability using illustrations like alien life on other planets, or Scooby-Doo and Shaggy in the Mystery Machine. This time, I'm going to talk about hypothesis testing using examples of babies, specifically baby weights. For this to make sense, I need some information from you. Let's find out how much you know about babies. Think about what you know about babies, all the babies you've ever met or known about. What would be a typical number? What would be an average for baby weight? Next, how much variability is there around that average? What would you say would be the range? Let's just keep it simple. What do you think would be a very low or maybe underweight baby? What's the minimum value that would be normal for a baby to weigh? And what would be a maximum value? What would be a baby that you would say, wow, that's a big baby, but still within the range of normal? To help answer this question, I went to the World Health Organization and this is what I found. In developed countries, the average newborn weighs 7.5 pounds or 3.4 kilograms, with a range between 6.0 and 10.1 pounds or 2.7 to 4.6 kilograms. How close were your guesses? Were you spot on or were you off a little bit or were you off quite a bit? Now that we know what the numbers truly are, let's apply what we're learning. You continue to search around on the internet and you come across an amazing story. You read about a woman in Siberia who gave birth to a 17 pound, one ounce baby. This is a true story. I know, I read it on the internet. And it also came from Reuters. So. I'm going to trust this one. And it has a picture, so it can't obviously be false. But regardless, we get really interested in this story and we start doing some exploration. And here's what we find. And by the way, at this point, I'm making things up. We discover that in Siberia, women routinely give birth to babies averaging 11 pounds. However, we know from the World Health Organization that the world population average is 7.5 pounds. Is that Siberian sample mean, because remember, Siberia is part of the world population, is that Siberian sample mean significantly different than the rest of the world? Is 11 different than 7.5? Oh yes. But is it statistically significantly different? That is what we're going to answer. We will use hypothesis testing to answer whether that Siberian sample mean represents the world population mean. Clearly, it is different. Is it different because of random error, what we would call chance, or is that Siberian sample mean different because it's really different? There's some kind of treatment effect. At this point, we're not specifying what we think that treatment effect would be. Does it have to do with something in the water or something in the, in the air? We're not going to try to guess. All we want to know is how likely is it that we would get a score like 11 from a sample if that sample mean was truly supposed to be 7.5. To answer that question, we are going to use hypothesis testing. And I am going to explain the five steps of hypothesis testing. Let me quickly add that you may see this same idea expressed in textbooks in which they explain it in six steps or seven steps. I have seen hypothesis testing explained in three steps and one time in only two steps. Here's what you need to know. No matter which source you read or how many steps they use, we are all describing exactly the same procedure. Therefore, I'm going to describe the five steps of hypothesis testing, and they are these. Number one, select the appropriate test. We're going to look at our data and determine what type of test we're going to run. Number two, establish a null and alternative hypothesis. 
Number three, place your bets. Select a criterion for statistical significance. Number four, do the math. Calculate the test statistic. And number five, interpret the results and write up the findings. I am going to use these same five steps for every hypothesis test that I teach you, not only in this basic business statistics course, but next in the applied business statistics course. Why am I doing that? Because I want you to get familiar with one way of doing it. I know that this is not the only way of describing hypothesis testing, but it is a way that works. And by keeping it consistent, you can focus less on the steps and more on what you're actually doing. I am going to show you for every test that I teach you how to write up the results in APA style. I will give you specific examples of write-ups for statistically significant results, for non-significant results, for one-tailed tests or two-tailed tests. That information will be available to you so that after you learn these steps, when you're doing your own research, you will have a model to follow as you do your write-ups. With that, let's get started and we will explore the first of the five steps of hypothesis testing.